What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about loop cuts and how you can use them to add geometric detail quickly inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember that at its core, objects inside a blender, if you tab into edit mode, are basically made up of edges and faces. So for example, this cube basically has an edge around the top that makes up the top and then a face, and then it has edges around each one of these faces um, that make up the supporting geometry for these faces. And so what that means is that means that these are things that we can edit in order to do things in Blender, right? So I can select this face, tap the G key to move it around, other things like that. Well, sometimes what we need is we need additional geometric detail in here. Like let's say for example that I wanted to create create something that was extruded inward on this surface. Well, right now I can't really do that, right? I can tap the E key to extrude on this surface, but we don't have the detail needed to have something smaller than this overall face in order to move that around. So one way that we add this detail is called adding loop cuts. And so if you tap the control and the R keys and you mouse over a face like this, that's going to allow you to add a loop cut. And so notice how when I mouse over this face, right, this is giving me a complete loop all the way around this object like this. And this is basically Blender showing us, okay, if we were to add a loop cut right here, this is where the edge would be. But what this is gonna do, if I was to click, and I'm just gonna right click for right now, is this is gonna add a loop to this object. And so if we fly 360 degrees around this object, notice what that's done is that's come in here and this has actually split this object all the way around. And so you can do this in multiple different directions. So if I was to tap Control R again and click and then right click, notice how this is going to split this again. So every time it does this, it's basically splitting up the faces and adding this additional geometric detail. So I can use this to add loop cuts all the way around my object like this. And so basically this has given us additional detail in here that we can then use in order to do different things, right? So I could like move these vertices in in order to make this face move inward, other things like that. So basically a loop cut is a way of adding that additional geometry. Now this is gonna work for multiple different kinds of shapes. So if I was to tab into edit mode on the cylinder, for example, and do the same thing. So if I was to do a control R, notice what this is going to do is this is going to add a loop cut all the way around the cylinder. And so this is really gonna work for any object that's made up of quad geometry. So for example, on this object, notice how it goes all the way around, even though the overall shape is a circular shape, because all of these edges are made up of quads or four-sided shapes. So notice how this only works though, where we have four-sided shapes. So if I try to do a control R over the top of this object, notice how I'm not getting a loop. Well, the reason I'm not getting a loop is because the top of this object is an n-gon. Since this object is, since the top of this object is an n-gon, it can't calculate where the loop would go because this upper face is made up of more than four edges. So I can add a loop here, or I can add a loop here, but I can't add a loop up here because this is made up of ingons. So in the same way, if I look at this cone right here and I tab into edit mode, notice how the cone is actually made up of tri geometry, right? So each one of these faces has one, two, three vertices in here. Well, what that means is that means if I do a control R like this. So notice how if I move over the top of this, this isn't actually giving me a loop. And so the reason this isn't giving me a loop is because these are made up of tries, not of quads. Now there are some workarounds for this. So for example, let's say that we had this uh, cone right here and I was to extrude down a little bit, right? Then I was to come in here and select this and move it up and then scale it in like this. So this has basically given me an uninterrupted cone, right? But now each one of these faces is made up of quads down below. So I could come in here if I wanted to and do a control R to add a loop cut. And notice how now, because each one of these faces in here between this point and this point is made up of quads, I can add a loop cut here. So if you can find a way to make faces quads, then loop cuts are going to work. All right, so another thing you might've noticed is I'm gonna tab back into edit mode and I'm gonna do control R to add another loop cut. You might've noticed that if you scroll your mouse up and down, 
like this, you can add a certain number of loop cuts in here. So what that means is that means this actually gives us the ability in here to add more than one loop cut at once. So if I was to click, and then I'm just going to right click right here, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to add six different loop cuts in here like this. And so you can use this in order to add multiple different cuts at one time, meaning you can create grids and other things like that really easily, just by kind of using a little bit of math and figuring out how much you want to divide up your objects. And so while we're here, let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about the menu that pops up when we do this. So notice how when we did this, this popped up the loop cut and slide menu. So that's basically the name of the tool that we're using. And so when this pops up, um, once you left click and then right click in order to set this, this menu pops up and allows you to adjust it, meaning that you have the ability to adjust this and as long as you don't click off of this object or off of this menu. So you can use this to adjust the number of cuts that are in here. You can also adjust the smoothness, which notice how when we adjust the smoothness on an object like this, it's actually going to move those objects outward. And so you can also change the fall off of the shape that it creates when it does that. So um, depending on the shape that you're trying to create, notice that you can use the smoothness to move this outward or inward. So you can use this to do some kind of interesting things with like proportionally moving things in and out as well, like this. And so once you're done, you can just click off of this object right here. So the other thing I wanna talk about is the ability to slide. So um, if we tab into edit mode on the cylinder right here and I do a control R, remember, that I can click in order to set this object. But you might have noticed that when you click, this is actually still live, which gives you the ability to move this loop cut up and down like this. So that's called sliding. And sliding is gonna give you the ability to move where your loop cuts are placed before you do the final placement. So if I was to click right here, notice how it's going to add this loop cut in here. And then if I was to do this again, single click, and then move my mouse up and down, I can left click in order to do a final set. And if I was to scroll my mouse up and add some more cuts, notice how I can slide those in here as well. So you can use this in order to place these on your surface, just like this. So one thing that I find helpful with this or good to note is sometimes you want basically a loop cut a certain distance off of the end of your object. So let's say I wanted something to be just a little bit off of this object right here. So if I do a control R, notice how there's not really, it doesn't really do snapping in here in the sense that I can't find a point on the surface or anything like that. But what I can do is I can add the loop cut on the end. So I'm gonna do a shift tab to turn on snapping, but I can add that loop cut on the end. Well, basically what it did is it added this loop on top of the other loop that was here. Well, that means that I can come in here and I can select that loop and I can actually move it around. So in this case, let's say that I wanted this to be like negative 0.25 meters or something like that. Um, I can just select that and activate that move tool and then I can type in negative 0.25 and hit the enter key. And so you can use this in order to add a cut on the end and then quickly move it down whatever distance off of the end that you want inside a blender. And so another thing to be aware of is notice how if the ends of the objects that you're uh, cutting between are angled, this is going to take on the angle of those objects. So if I do a control R in here, for example, and move my mouse over this, notice how this is going to do a loop cut that kind of aligns with the ends in here. So you can use this in order to create interesting diagonal loop cuts like this by changing the orientation of the faces. So another good example I've seen is if you have a cylinder like this and notice what I've done is I've come in here and I've actually cut this using the knife tool. So I've cut this so it has some diagonal circular cuts in here. Well now if I do a control R between these objects like this, notice how I can add diagonal cuts to this object. So if you wanna create diagonal cuts like this in your object, you can actually come in here and you can do that by adding a diagonal cut along your surface. Notice how if I do that over here, it kind of tries to align this um, based on how close it is to one end or the other. So if I come closer to this end, it's gonna be more aligned with this end. If I come closer over here, it's gonna be more aligned with the diagonal cut. So by adding that additional geometry in here, you can affect the way that this works inside Blender. And so another thing to be aware of is there's also a tool in here. If I do a control R, um, notice how right now, if I add this cut in here, it's doing that same thing where it's kind of taking on the orientation of the two ends. If you tap the E key, 
like this, what that's gonna do is that's gonna try to evenly match between the edges that are in here. So notice how in this case, instead of having it, if I tap the E key right here, right, it's changing the direction that this is facing. But if I tap the E key over here, notice how it's aligned with these edges on this side right here. So by tapping that E key, you can kind of change the way that this tool acts when you're adding these additional cuts in here. And so just real quick, like practically how you might use this is let's say that you had like a little diorama of a room or something like that. You wanted to add a window. Well, what you might do is you might come in here and you might add a pair of loop cuts vertically. You might add another pair of loop cuts or a pair of loop cuts horizontally and then another pair of loop cuts vertically. Well, now what we've done is we've come in here and we've created a window opening that we can then extrude backward if we want this to have like a frame or something like that. But now we've got the additional geometry in here um, that we can then work with. So I've seen a lot of people when they're modeling from like photos or something like that, come in here and add a loop cut for a window but they'll use it to add detail for something like window mullions or something like that. So something like this, but then now you've got that additional geometry in here where you can kind of loop, extrude this outward. So you've got a little bit of a frame or something like that, just so this isn't flush with the wall. Then they'll apply a glass material or they'll even apply the photo material to this, but then they'll plug in an input so it looks a little bit reflective. So it's a fast way that you can add things like windows and other detail. Notice you don't see all of those edges if you tab back out of edit mode. So it's something where you can add that additional detail, but you don't have to worry too much about it showing up if you like render this out or something like that. So another thing people will use this for is let's say that they wanted to create like a simple table or something like that. Um, what they could do is they could add a couple loop cuts in here real quick. And obviously this isn't going to be a perfect example, but they'll use this to extrude out like table legs or other things like that. This is a really good, um, this is a really good tool for adding that additional detail that you can then use in order to extrude out different things. All right, so that should give you a general idea of how to use the loop cut tool. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything else that you'd like to see covered. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.